Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back today to the Dota Pit League season number three. We are here with our second series of the day. It's Ninjas in Pajamas versus Team Arino, Tink Arino. That's right. It's a big match. A big match indeed. We'll see who comes out on top of this two-game series in just a bit. But right now, we get to start out with a draft of a great series. We have the Swedish squad of NIP versus the mostly European, somewhat North American Team Tinker and their newly acquired roster of Black, uh, Koikva, Pilai Dai, uh, way too, as well as Boba. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today here on Dota Pit. My name is Mott, joined today by Pit Muckle, our production manager. Quantum Stats, who's stepping in for Mott Packs, who's who's off. And of course, as always, Trouf is here with me today. Trouf, how are you? I'm doing good, sir. I almost didn't make it. I was watching a Stephen Hawking uh, documentary. Don't ask me why. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm doing good. I just woke up, but I'm still feeling pretty damn good. Uh, it should be a good match. Yeah, man, this is, uh, I think, honestly, this is one of the, the ones I'm most excited for. We've, we've talked about, you know, the, the Cloud9 versus EG matchup, which already happened. We talked about um, Secret versus some of the people in Group B. But I think as far as importance goes, this is a very important match because we're right before the qualifiers. And really, every match matters at this point. And especially here in Dota Pit as well, not just for TI, but for Dota Pit and what it means for these teams. Team Taker is 2-2 two and two right now, which is an okay spot to be in, but if they want to get one of those top two spots in the group, they will have to take out NIP, who is 3-1. And one. And NIP, uh, of course, playing very solid Dota, going 1-1 one, one against C9, going 2-0 against Power Rangers. Now their toughest test to date is, is here between them and Team Tinker, and we're already well underway in the draft, and well... Uh, some interesting picks coming out. The liking yeah. for NIP and the drow for Team Tinker. Yeah, if you look at the order too, it was Ninjas and Pajamas picked up the Visage, and then they picked Drow after that because they saw Venge, Batrider, Visage. This has to have been a block pick, like a straight up block pick. Um, but I don't know. I'm not so sure that they wanted Drow because they picked up Lycan instantly. Maybe they yeah. were thinking, okay, we'll we'll take the Drow, but if they if they pick it for some reason, we'll pick Lycan as a second a secondary. So yeah. it's very, very interesting to me to think uh, they actually picked the Drow Ranger here. Um, I mean, I guess they have Lion to, be cup or to, to benefit from the aura. Shadowfiend will benefit from it, at least in the early stages. But he kind of benefits from his own, you know, pump of damage anyway, from his Necromastery. So uh, Bristleback picked up, I, I think, also in counter to, well, both the Visage and the Lycan, actually. The Quills are really, really good against uh, both those heroes. So I think that's a fine pick. Yeah, the, the physical damage coming out, making sure the Lycan Wolves go down. I think uh, Cool Spray also affects uh, the familiars, I'd imagine, right? Like, uh-huh. Yeah, 100, okay, good. I just, God, I have to make sure every, every time I'm like, I'm I'm so nervous now with the mechanics. And uh, there, there are things I learn, honestly, like every day in this game. It's ridiculous, but that's just the way of Dota, I suppose. And, all right, well, last band's coming out. We We missed a lot of the draft, but you know what? We're almost underway with the game, and that's all that really matters, folks. It's the game. That's right. Well, they're also going by, I think, pretty fast, too. So, um, last ban here coming out. The ban from Nip was uh, Earthshaker. They're going to ban out the Viper, which I think Nip do like. I think they do run it a lot, so. They go with the Broodmother. Oh, wow. That's probably going to be a mid bat rider, I would assume. Um, I don't know how good it is against Shadow Fiend, just because Shadow Fiend, with the buff to his raises and having the extra little bit of damage to help him get those last hits from Drow. Um, yeah, and like it wouldn't be good against Shadow Fiend, so I think it's going to be a mid Bat Rider. Could be a mid Broodmother. Uh, that's very strange. We haven't seen that, and so, well, many of us haven't seen it at all. But yeah, that's going back. That's going way back into into Dota One. Uh, the old meta, and then of course, like you talked about, Shadow Fiend with the raises against Broodmother, pretty solid hero in that regard. Um, making sure the Broodlings aren't really an issue, but there's other ways to build the Brood, obviously, and, and to deal with Shadow Fiend as well. But yeah, I, I think it is mid Bat Rider, but then again, we'll have to wait and see. It's been a long time since I've seen that. It is honestly mostly been offlane Bat Rider for, for a long, long time, for years, even is what it feels like. But Team Taker have to pick up their last support here, real quick. We'll see what they run to run. They go for the Keeper of the Light. That is something I was not expecting. Very good against the Broodmother. Uh, good against pushing, too. Obviously, the magic uh, resistance for the Lycan Wolves helps out a lot, but 
Um, this is just, they want to have counter push. They want to be able to also relocate some heroes or rather recall heroes across the map. This is a hero I'm going to get excited for, but I'm, I'm a bit doubtful about how it's going to work out. I'm a bit uh, skeptical to say the least. I think, um, I think it's going to be a Coddle Bristleback lane, which is pretty good against what Lycan Visage Venge are going to have to offer. It's actually not that strong of a tri lane. They don't really have much kill potential unless someone really missteps. Um, and you can't really go on the bristle back because he's probably going to be get, if he hits, you know, if he gets some good levels before they initiate onto him, like if he's level three, it's going to be really hard to go on him. If they go on him pre-level three, maybe they get the kill, but he's yeah. already innately tanky where it's difficult. So I would, I would suspect that it'll be a coddle bristle back off lane and then like lion drow bottom. Actually, drow's going mid. They're going to put the SF safe lane, um, against the, what they think is going to be the brood and it will be the brood. Yes. So, Drow going mid, though, up against Batrider doesn't seem like the best matchup for Drow. I mean, you have decent right click. You can frost air limp if he tries to get close, I suppose. If limp is, in fact, going mid, which we're, we're not really sure what's happening just yet, but... Oh, he is. Oh, my God. I've never seen this. It's a no yeah. tally on a Batrider. He wants that base damage. What the hell? Uh, way too sticky day palm. Can they kill him? Hanskin didn't get Grave Chill. All right, they needed, so, yeah, they needed a seal kit in front to get the initiation, but just a little awkward spot. They're going to put a sentry up here, too. Wow. All right, but yeah, the Null Talisman Batrider. <laughs> that seems that so strange. It's level. funny that he goes Null Talisman and the two branches, but he still has, like, only 50 damage. His damage is so bad. So we'll, we'll see if it makes a difference. Um, I don't know that it does, actually. <laughs> like, in the long run, but we'll see. As far as last hitting is concerned, uh, it's going to be interesting. I think Black, I mean, he's got plenty of base damage to work with before Precision Aura. Um, Animation-wise, it's not the best. And Sticky Napalm is going to be a nuisance as well. Black will have to get a, a stick very early on here. Way2 is going to block for Black as he picks up the early bounty rune. Limp just blocks right off the bat. And so, yeah, what do we got going on as far as lanes? Off lane Bristle, like you said, Way2 probably joins him. And then dueling bottom up against the... Broodmother, do they have any sentries? Pilot Eye does, in fact, have sentries. There's this Observer Ward placed down by NIP. All right, things starting to shape up here for uh, this game number one in this two game series. Ooh, he also has the Howl from Lycan right now. That's going to help for sure. Yeah. So, Null Talisman, kind of weird, but now he has the Howl damage. He's also got extra damage when he sp spams the Sticky Napalm. Oh, he's missing some CS on his own, though, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. Oh, he missed two right there. And they were kind of uncontested, too. Black wasn't even going for denies, so. We'll see how this pans out, but. Um, yeah, should be interesting. And there's the Coddle Bristleback lane, as expected. This seems like something I would try in a pub, and, and it would just be the most amazing thing in the world. Although, no chakra magic. Like, how do you fight up against this? Take an Illuminate to the face, and then Bristleback runs at you. That does not seem fun. That does Bul not seem like something I'd like to have happen. Bulba's used all his mana right now. I know he's going to get the shock from soon from uh, from way two, but uh, even level one, it's not that impressive. It's only seventy five mana restore exactly. restoration. So I, I I see this sometimes from Bristlebacks, and I I don't approve where you like get up there right away into your lane and you just start spamming quills. They don't do very much at level one. Level two, they start doing a lot more, or I should say rank two, but. Again, he does have Chakra coming up soon, but it's not that impressive. Yeah, the first level of Chakra is a bit uninspiring. And, like, it barely gives enough mana to do another Illuminate, for that matter, and Quill Sprays even. It's it's still going to be an issue. I I don't think he has to go bottle. Like, do you go bottle if you're an offlane Bristleback in this situation? Like, because Bristles in the offlane usually pick that up. But if you have Chakra Magic, you probably forego it, right? Or maybe not? Um... Yeah, probably not. You probably don't need to spend a 700 gold. Um, although it would be nice to have some extra rune control on a hero because SF's not mid. So, and I would definitely not imagine the Drow going for a bottle. So, and I don't even know if SF's going to go for bottles because he's in the safe lane. So, speaking of safe lane for him, how's Jones Fan doing on the brood? Up to four CS. Um, there is a sentry down that sees him. But they don't really have too much kill potential unless he really missteps. Yeah, this, uh, it's a dual lane. They need some good raises to come out from Quickfoot. Pilot Eye needs to hit like a, a godlike or a spiker, maybe just get a nice hex off. It's going to be tough. He's not counter warding, obviously, for the offlane brood. He's just kind of letting the, the sentry stay. And 
he doesn't seem to be too worried about it. So we'll check back in down bottom periodically. I don't think anything will happen. Bulba's There's a running chakra. at air atop, and yeah, the chakra coming out now. Bulba back up to a decent mana pool, and because Bul uh, Bulba's mana pool is so low, it's it's pretty nice, I guess, for even that level one. Illuminate's going to come out to save off any aggression from Hanskin and Silicon who are running at them, but as far as things uh, shaping up, it, it really is just both teams farming up. The mid matchup is the thing that I'm most interested in at this point, where Lip is actually doing a bit better than Black, because... If Black gets too close and he takes too many sticky napalms, all of a sudden Limp's gonna Firefly, and uh, Black has no boots. It is very easy to dive this drow and kill her uh, at this point in the game. Yep, and Black is actually maxing the Frost Arrows first, which I think is actually the the better decision here. His his range, oh, he's actually pumping in a lot of damage on Limp, but if you look at his range heroes on his side, it's, they're not very impressive with auto attack damage anyway. They're more reliant on their spells, mm. even even the SF for that matter. So actually maxing out the precision aura this game, I don't think is the right decision. So I like his decision to max out frost arrows instead. I just like the fresh draft that they have. I mean, it doesn't seem too bad. There's nothing crazy about it. It's not like they're picking into any counter picks here or anything like that. It's just it, uh, I think it's solid. They are lacking initiation uh, pretty heavily up oh, top. They're wrapping around on a Bulba. We'll see if he can turn this back. He's level four though, man. That's, yeah, he's gonna I, do a lot of damage. Oh, that, his back was turned to that nuke. I think he could have kept going for one more quill spray. It would have killed Era. Wow, he's he down 20 HP. And I think if he does get that kill, he gets first blood and then he dies in the end and trades into a one for one. That would have mm -hmm. been close. Yeah, he, he wanted to play it safe, but I, I think if he got the Lycan, it definitely would have been worth it. Like you mentioned, it would have been a first blood. Yeah, he would have died, but the carry died too, so... You want that ballsy it's play, Anna. I, I know, I feel you. <laughs> I, want, <laughs> I want them going in, I want them running at each other. Yeah, but... it's like it's like watching... Have you ever watched Australian rugby? Yes. Or, or I don't know if it's called Australian football or whatever. Oh, Limp is gonna get destroyed. Those, those frost arrows slow him to a halt, and then the earth spike comes out, pops him up into the air. Black gets the first blood, and that's the run at you I'm looking for, and that's from a Drow Ranger. Yep, and now he's got the marksmanship to give him the extra 40 agility, so he's doing really well for himself. It was relatively even, in fact, like you are mentioning, Limp was doing better in terms of CS earlier on, but uh, he doesn't have, like, all he's got now are boots, and it's like, if you put this into perspective of how a Batrider does normally in the offlane, running to get the stacks at around this time, he's very, very far behind it. Like, you, you would hope to have, um, I would say 1,200 gold right now. With your right. boots, close right. to a blink, but not even close to that. And also bought the bottle too, so he's really set back. So the only thing that I would imagine that would be better is that Blimp would be shutting Black down in terms of like shutting the opposing mid later down with Sticky Napalm and able to right. fly and get a kill, but that's not even happening either. So this, nope. this mid lane right now is starting to become, I wouldn't say disastrous, but it's becoming an issue for sure. Whereas, um, oh my God, Koikva has 62 CS. I know a lot yeah. of those are broodlings, but still that... That's a big number at six and a half minutes in. It's actually massive. There have to have been a ton of broodlings fed. But I, I wonder what the raise buff too. You can probably just one shot raise these uh, broodlings. Yeah, I, think it I, I want to look, but I bet he can. He walks up again. He more than two? likely will. Okay. Two, well, that's uh, still I'm sure Koifa is having a pretty good time regardless. 65 CS. Uh, Limp now taking the jungle here. He has one stack, two stacks actually because of Wave of Terror with the double stack and Actually looking for a third stack here on this uh, hard camp, but this gives Black free farm in the mid lane. And the biggest problem with the Drow Ranger is that she snowballs out of control unless you gank her. And they're really not putting any emphasis onto this Drow Ranger at all. And you can actually say the same thing about an SF. And they're both having a great time. One race gets a couple of brood blinks. He's up to 76 CS now. And uh, God, Fred's a kilo. Yeah, they're going to go for him, but... Uh, he's already got a lot of farm. Silken's gonna walk right up. Koikva backs away smartly. The slow might come through. They don't have incapacitating bite. So Koikva is absolutely fine. The TP back in from the line. They'll scout everyone else out. And that was just a huge waste of time for NIP. Yeah, they had the Avenge trying to initiate like straight onto him, breaking the smoke with no boots. The only way you can do that, like he probably could have done it maybe, maybe if he had boots, but he didn't have boots. So he needs to wrap around. 
And I, I know that they were desperate because the smoke was fading, but that just was a gank that would, would have never worked anyway, so... What about if you... Ponskin initiates with Grave Chill because he has boots? Would that work out? Maybe. He does have boots, but he's also one of the slowest oh, heroes in the game. Oh, some fan. Hexed up and double raise comes through. The ganks become the gankers. That's pretty important. And, uh... He's up yeah, to like... 96 CS. Yes. <laughs> it's just casual 96. Almost 100 at 9 minutes into the game. Again, a lot of those broodlings doesn't matter. It's oh, still and gold. Gold is gold. Stacks. And he's taking stacks. Or he's not taking stacks. Or he's Ooh. gonna go kill. Black has a mom. They see Zilk kid 100%. He takes four hits, three hits to go down. And now they're gonna go into Hanskin, but he actually has an invis rune, luckily enough. Black has a mom at eight and a half minutes in. Bulba's diving into air. He's gonna try to shapeshift and get out of here. Chakra's gonna go. Viscous is not available, nor would it matter against the shapeshifted uh, Lycan. So Era actually has to back away. Now his farm is going to get stifled. He is up to 52 CS. He luckily does have Vlad's, but besides Era, this game is going pretty poorly for NIP. Supports are dying. Brood has died. Koix is having free farm. Black has free farm. And he has broken the all-time 10-minute CS record for Shadow Fiend, which, I mean, again, it's Broodlings. It's not that big of a surprise, but it's still ridiculous, and he's going to have a Yule's. He's going to have Yules at like 10 minutes into the game, which might be the fastest tread Yules on record. We'll see. This bottom lane was just, I, I thought it would go better. Like, not only did he, did they get tons of spiderling kills, and he can one-shot the spider ites, just not the spiderlings. Yes. Uh, but not only did he get tons of spider kills, but Lime wasn't there for a, the whole time. He was also stacking the jungle while they were winning the lane heavily. Which is which is why we're seeing 115 CS right now pre 10 minutes. This is just this is just disastrous. Every lane is just is lost. Every lane is lost. And Bulba in the top lane having a great time. 41 CS for him. Uh, he is going Vanguard, and I think he might have it. No, he just needs that that uh, Vitality booster. We do see something flying down. I believe that is the completed Yules for Koikva at 10 minutes into the game. By the way, I think he actually purchased it at 9:50 or 9:45. Uh, Treads Yules at uh, that that point in time is is pretty goddamn fast, and yeah, that's uh, that's something else. Yeah, they do have a lane ward up here top to see that Bulba and Keep the Light are still up here. Uh, Hanskin, he just really wants his level six. Again, though, the cools are are pretty strong against that. So, yep, there's the Yules delivered. So if this uh, brood missteps for one second, gets Yules up in the air. That Requiem's up and ready to go. It should be level 2. He actually didn't level it up to level 2, I don't think. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. He levels <laughs> he the presence. It. Maybe, Nothing. okay. He he didn't use Requiem before this game, has he? Because sometimes, the only time you like don't level up your ult in this situation is like if it was already on cooldown and you already had a skill no, power he has to go. No, he's never Requiem'd. No, yeah. I, I, maybe he wanted to push the tower more and get that extra armor reduction, but I, that seems like a misclick to me. I don't know. We'll see. It might not. Work. It, it might not even matter. Although level 11 to 12 t does take a while to get to, but they're gonna pop the mom. They're gonna go for limp TP mid rotation coming in from the venge, and this tower should fall pretty quickly as well. And this snowball lineup for Team Tinker is working without them even needing to get get a ton of kills at this point. Jeez, the net worth is 7,200 for SF. This is massive. And, I mean, how do you stop him? Bruta is going Midas, so she could try to man fight, but again, Yule's Requiem, again, you don't want to fight into that. And there could be TP rotation. They have to, they would have to dedicate a lot of resources and time to kill him. But, uh, no, top lane, Hanskin. Finger, cool spray. Wow. Actually, get the kill with Soul Assumption. Now, Arrow walking in. Pylai die. He's in a world of hurt. He's going to fall. <clears throat> and they will deny the tower. So that's what they needed to do. Forget about Black. Forget about Quick for a minute. Just get farm on your cores. Get that Blink Dagger up, for God's sakes. And he finally is there. And I feel like that could have been a lot worse for Limp. 12 minute Blink Dagger. I, I think it's, it's good that he actually has it at that point. So. At least there's something coming out for NIP now as well. Yeah, um, it, uh, that was a really good job by by Hanskin, just using all his spells in the correct order and getting the most out of his uh, the most damage that he possibly could. It was very very close. He almost died, and could have been detrimental if he did. There's a Vanguard for Bulba. Um, 
Keep the light. Not putting any points in the mana leak. I really like mana leak, especially at least just one point of it. Yeah. When you level this up, it's a three second stun. Um, when they and they lose all their mana. So I, I mean, this is kind of the more standard thing, but uh, I do like to see some mana leak leveling up. Uh oh, this could be disastrous. Bulba? Blink Lasso might go on a quick but They see him. Who are they gonna go for? Boba instead is the focus target. He's getting low. Big Earth Spike on to three. Now the right click black is missing a lot. Era still hexed up. Might be able to shapeshift away. He knows he's dead. I think the Lasso still went quick on the high ground. Doesn't get the Requiem off. Only the passive. Steel Kid juking black, but finally gets spotted out by the ward. Double kill coming through from black, and it is a two for one. They do get a big target. That bounty coming out for the uh, SF. Gives about a 500 gold swing to Visage and 250 gold to the Bat Rider. And they will not complete Roche. They're waiting as Broodmother is nearby. Black is huge though, man. Oh my god. Mask of Madness Yasha in 1200. So, we'll see if Brood has any items coming his way. He went for the Midas, which is kind of the standard thing. Uh, Koikva has a blink also, by the way. I don't know yeah. when that happened, but... Right before that fight. Oh my god. Yeah, but they did a good job. Limp did a good job about keeping him on that cliff there, but also keeping his distance too, because even though he went on him, he could still die. Black, we'll see if Eric can do something here. No initiation. Black is wow. gonna fall and Bulba runs in, but now here comes Koifa as well. Limp and the rest of NIP getting low. It is a two for one. Eric can run away. There is the blotting light. Black does buy back. Hanskin now on the cliff gets Requiem, but there were not really any souls up for Koifa. Now he's got them. Jonas and fan's going to walk back in. Koifa knows he could blink, but he actually gets hit up. And now Jonas and fan getting stunned up by the centaur. No detection. Turns into a three for four. And actually Tinker Black. Buys back. Jonas and Fawn. Jonas and Fan actually doing a lot of work. Buyback from the Lycan now. But this this Roshan is falling so quick. But here come the Wolves and the Spiderlings. Black now has to be careful. They've got to get this Rosh. Will they pick it up in time? Yes. No snatch either. Jonas and Fan getting chased down. Getting right click. Insatiable Hunger's pop. They get the kill. Black now ages up. But he will get dragged out of the high ground, and he doesn't have a TP. No four staff to help either. Black is going to be stuck for some period of time and might actually just be dead as well. Magic Missile is going to go. And they put a lot of emphasis on this Roche, only to lose Black three times. One buyback, and then he gets the Aegis and dies again. Still good for Nip, or sorry, good for Tinker though, because they got the Roche kill. So they got the extra gold and the experience for them, which is really, really important. I mean, you look at the SF net worth, too. It's still ridiculously strong. The Brood actually goes for a boot to travel over anything else. So, he yeah, has actually, like, no fighting items. Just wants the mobility of being able to not only push, but to arrive to the fight at the same time. Which you can arrive via the Visage Bird Express, but... Or the Lycan Wolf Express, I should say. Yeah. So, maybe that's his thinking with that. I will say, though, when Howl is up... And it is only one, rank one Howl. They actually do a lot of damage with Howl applied to the Broodlings and the or the Spiderlings and the um, the Visage Birds. It does a lot of damage. It's just a matter of keeping control of this Bristleback's AOE spam with this Quill Spray. It's like that. If he can get some stacks up, it's just going to kill everything. Yeah, the big thing for me in that last fight, which is what you talked about in the draft, is there is really no initiation at all from Tinker, at least until they get a... I, I guess they have Blink on, on the Shadow Fiend, but they need a Blink of the line yeah. for sure. But there's the Yules. Requiem is available. Not going to use it. Race first. They kill all of those Whoa. brood legs. And then Pilai die. Says, let me just chaos you. Let me figure you real quick. And he gets the kill. And now he's up to 830. Kill secured. And I guess that gives him a little bit more bounty to uh, arrive at that blink tag a little bit faster pace. Which he will need. But he's also the, the only one buying. Well, actually, no. Coddle is helping out, I think. No, Coddle is going for a four staff. So, way too is taking some me time right now as uh, he's pretty much buying er, all the items and letting. Yep, he has it and letting uh, Pilot Die get all the wards. Keeper of the Light, the standard pub. I'm not going to buy wards, I'm just going to, you know, eliminate all of your waves and stacks and, and take all of your farm. But actually, no, that's, I mean, that's a byproduct that I think the top lane doing decently well, then maybe heading to the jungle. Gets an early four staff, which is is pretty good this game. Uh, there's a lot of mobility that NIP have. So any way to get away from either Era or the Lasso, Force Staff is definitely something they can 
it can work with. And now there is also, you talked about the Broodlings, the Howl, and the Visage Birds, and they do have Crimson Guard for Bristleback, which I think is a very important item in this game because of all of those damage sources from NIP. Yeah, yeah, I like the I like the Crimson Guard a lot. I think I see a lot of Bristlebacks just get Vanguard and leave it at that. But oh, there's action on mid actually, as Black is caught out by the Bat Rider. So nice pick off there, and it's going to be a plus one because there's every member pretty much actually save one bottom. That's the Brood, and he's dead again. But they do get the Tower of Mid as well. That was a Yule's SF Requiem combo that gets uh, quick for up to 3.7k. Although the, the death ball from NIP is arriving and the tier one tower and tier two tower was falling. But uh, now you have to wonder what Quickfoot goes for. Is this a BKB type game or because there's Lasso, maybe you just circumvent that and go for another item, say early Butterfly, Scotty, something along those lines? I think, yeah, Scotty Butterfly is actually really good here. BKB doesn't, nece he doesn't necessarily need it because the physical damage and the Lasso, so that's kind of... If he got that, I would think it's very strange. Scotty is not the greatest against Lycan because he can still run away, but it still will apply slow to the other people and an attack speed slow, so and just make you tanky. I think that's the best choice. He's going to have it very, very quickly if that's what he wants to go for, too. Uh, Era is maybe going to be food for that gold for the uh, SF, but no, actually, just they missed the, I think, Earth Spike, and they can't secure the kill on... I, th I think they need to give a lane to Pile I Die. He needs to get some, like you said, me time for Coddle, but it needs to be for the Lion now. As Coddle has his four staff, there's no reason for him not to help out with support items and, and Pile I Die not getting wards, so. Or uh, Blink, rather, excuse me. Yeah, he should. they should have prioritized a Blink on Lion. I will say that Ags is so legit on, on Coddle. Um, it's yeah. really, really good if you Pretty can actually amazing. get the farm. Recalls for days, blinding light, pretty nice to have. Yep, everything. The it gives you map hack in daytime. In, in daytime. Yeah. It heals your entire team with your illuminate. It's. Oh, it's so I good. actually forget about that half the time. I forget that it heals. Yeah, it's like a 450 heal or something like that. It's really, really strong. I don't play with enough keep, keepers of the light, which is odd considering I play with Kalo Guy a lot, but <laughs> just not something that I see or. or I don't know, it's actually, it's a really good Ags upgrade that we don't see enough of because nobody really picks Coddle anymore, but well, we'll see at this game, perhaps. Hans gets speaking of Aghanim Scepters, he's going for one of his own. We talked about ways to deal with the Visage Birds, though, with the Quill Sprays, and um, that's going to be important. Obviously, Black and Quick would take them down very quickly, too. There's the SMY now done. Blank last to gonna go. That is going to be Pile I Die. So much for that Blank Dagger. Buy out. He will not buy a TPR or anything before he goes down. Loses about 300 gold. So it's a nice pickoff. Again, stifles the Blink Dagger farm, and uh, it's it's a lasso that at least they get something done with. Yeah, and you could argue that it's uh, it's only a lasso to support, but like you're mentioning, he was actually making uh, g good grounds on getting closer to that Blink, so I, I think it's actually a very important kill. So the, the, the one scary thing, he actually goes for a Lincolns here. Um, I... hmm... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I guess it's going to stop the four staff of Batrider because he's going to have to use it mm. before he lassos. Um, the only problem with that though is that there's no there's no blink on the line, so the blink so line can't really quickly initiate back in to stop the the lasso from from or to stop the Batrider from dragging it backwards. So I don't know how I feel about this pickup. I I, I guess it's okay. It's gonna it's gonna basically make Batrider's four staff useless until he gets like a Yules or something. At the rate Quickfoot's farming, it might not matter anyways. He can get that next item so quickly, assuming everything keeps going the way it is. Uh, but that's a bold assumption. They are taking a lot of the enemy jungle, but uh, conversely, NIP are doing the same thing. Hanskin's been down here for a while. Jonas Samfan is, of course, just making sure he's going to get all that he can out of the out of the map. And he So his Midas and his bots have been up for a while, and now he picks up a belt of strength, and he has a... No, that's... That's a Necro coming out for you. Yeah, so Jonas fan is actually going to be going for Necro Book. Um, an interesting choice. This is full all-out push. You have Visage Birds, you have the Necro Book, you have the Broodlings, you have the Lycan Wolves, and another Necro Book for Era. Yeah. Oh, and dear. They're, they're all going to get Howl, too. That's like the, the big thing. They're all going to benefit from this Howl. So I, I think that's the strat that they, have in, that they had in mind from the get-go. So they're just building these minion-based heroes around the howl and the boosted damage that Lycan can provide. 
And I mean, we've seen it even just a little bit without the Necro 3s coming out, and it's very, very strong. It's just a matter of having the right execution and having the right kind of fight rather than just running at them willy nilly with a bristleback getting multiple cool sprays off. For some of these supports, we're going to have to, I think, see Ghost Scepters, maybe even Ethereal Blades at some point. So I'm, I don't know if Crimson Guard is enough in this situation for. Uh, Probably for, not. Yeah, I think, I think that doesn't really do that much against everything that they have. Really good Observer Ward here from NIP, scouting exactly. Uh, where, wow, way too lost a lot of health there from the Broodlings. Jesus, half of his health gone. Pilot Eye also about to die. If he had Axe, he'd just be able to finger. He is going to dust before he goes down, but he, he more than likely will. Uh, he might live, actually, and Bulba's probably going to feed on these, these little Broodlings. Although the Cool Spray is not doing as much work as he would like. But he still gets them anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Necro 2 and now up for the Brood. Lion is still... Getting there, he's he's closing closing in on his blink. He, oh, he has to buy more sentries. I would wish that Coddle would help him buy this thing or buy these things, but Coddle has no money, so it's kind of unfortunate that you're forced to buy this constantly when you're so close to your blink, which is such a crucial item on Lion. Very very crucial item, especially against a Bat Rider. Era sitting in wait with uh, a Yule Scepter now coming out. Seal Kid, goodbye. See you later. But Quickfoot might need some help here. Arrow running quick, but down the mana burn. He does have his Lincolns through. He has Yules up in 10. Blink getting canceled. Nice force coming through. There's the mana leak. Big Earth Spike from Pilot Eye. Raze is going to come through. Figure of Death. Lasso from Lip onto Pilot Die. Counter initiation now going on to him. But in the end, it actually just turns into a 1 for 0. Unless they could somehow catch Era. And that's where that Blink dagger for Pilot Die would come into play. Bobo running in, though. Era getting low. No mana for TP, by the way. Viscous Nizugu. Black is on the hunt they go the wrong direction illuminate <laughs> they realize very quickly they've been juked they've been had and era says see you later chumps you guessed poorly <laughs> he chose poorly yeah that seen was, that's what i was going for man i'm, I'm glad <laughs> you picked up on that <laughs> well, one of my favorite movies so i had to have excellent what a great but, movie yes um, yep, he chose poorly. Unfortunately, I thought Lycan was dead for sure because the mana leak came out. But, which is rank only two right now, unfortunately. Rank three is, or sorry, rank four is really good because not only do you get an amazing stun duration, which is three seconds, but the range on it is a thousand. It's very, very far away, so you can cast it out of harm's way. Yeah, this is, uh, what do you feel, what do you think about the level two chakra magic? Is that enough for the Keeper of the Light? Or... In some situations it is. Um, in this situation, I think it's fine. The only people you're going to be manning, using mana on are Bristleback and yourself. Nobody else needs it. The Lion can mana himself. Shadowfiend has tons of mana regen as it is. Black doesn't really need mana. Well, there's the Aegis. And I'm sure they wanted to contest that, but when you have that many different minions out, it's, it's kind of difficult to deal with. Black, by the way, going for what I would imagine to be a butterfly. Quickfly has 3.7, so like I said, just as quickly as he gets that Lincoln Spear up, he has another item to go for. For NIP, what do we have in terms of items now? Um, Necro 3s. Yeah, just a couple of Necros and... And then Axe for Hanskin, and that's about it. He's almost got it. Not quite yet, though, but... Boots of Travel just picked up on limp i think it's going to be really important that limp gets another maybe yule or another lincoln's canceling item I, I think the four stuff is so important this game and in, in dragging them back faster although he does have a haste rune bottled up right now which is one of the best it's, it's actually the, the best rune for a bat rider um just so that you can drag them with 522 movement speed further away from their team and closer to yours so we'll see yeah. if he can make this haste rune uh do something can you imagine when NIP get an Assault Kuros, if that's going to be one of their next items, which I imagine it would be, at least for, I think, for the Brood. Like, that seems like an absurd amount of damage that all the units can do. It, it just seems, I don't know how you deal, like, Team Taker had such a, like, a huge lead early on in the game, and they could have maybe snowballed out of control, but instead, that Roche fight maybe gave a little bit too much to NIP now, and... It's, it's a tough road, I feel like, for Tinker in this situation because of all of these minions. It's just Team Tinker's extremely top-heavy right now in terms of net worth for the Shadow Fiend.
Yeah. But if like if he dies right away, I don't know. That's a that's a huge amount of net worth just gone in their team fight right away. Obviously, Black is doing a ton of damage too, but he also gets dealt a ton of damage, especially if that Mask of Madness is on. Like we've seen him last out, and he just dies immediately. So th that's the problem, I guess, against this nip lineup is no matter how much farm you had, if you get isolated, you die immediately. Except mm -hmm. maybe the Bristleback. But even then, I don't know. I mean, they have two Necro 3s with Howl damage. Yeah, he's pretty tanky, but it, tanky enough is the question. And uh, I don't know. They might just let this tier 2 go. They have recall ready for Bristle. I think Bulba should actually keep split pushing. I'm not... They, I guess they do see that Lycan is missing. They see that maybe Brood is missing, which she'll always be missing on the map. Um, and he backs away. He does push the wave in pretty heavily, but that'll be some farm for whoever wants it on any piece side. Pilot Eye now 20 gold away from that blink dagger. He is getting there. When he has that, he'll still probably die within seconds to the, the, those units. So, I mean, he, that's another thing he just has to be super careful of. But it's just, it's really important that he gets the blink so that he can um, counter initiate the bat if he's on, if he's on point. It, it, like just being able to blink in instantly and then hex yep. or something. Yep could totally stifle the initiation and in result the entire fight of Nip. So it's really important that he's ready for that Batrider. We have yet to see any real pick off or fight uh, for at least a couple of minutes now. And I, for Team Taker, that's fine. They don't want to fight into ages, so they farm the map. For NIP, they are really waiting. I'm not sure on what. They have the Aghanims now. I think they're waiting on the BKB for the Lycan more so than anything else, which is pretty far away. He still needs a Mithril Hammer and the recipe, so... It'll take him some time, and in the meantime, Broodmother will farm her next item. Yona Samfan will will probably grab. Like I said, I think I think it'll be an assault cuirass. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I think that sounds like a very smart smart item choice this game. What do you think? Sure. Yeah, it could be good. Um, I think it's a little late to go for something like an orchid. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a TP coming up from Coddle to help prevent this push coming out. In the last five minutes though, or I should say since they got the Aegis on Nip, that Team Teaker has been playing very, very scared. Like they actually haven't been farming very well. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Here comes a big push with tons of minions and stuff. Ulti coming from the Coddle to help spam oh things out. Oh my lord. Did that kill all those broods? I think it did. A lot of them, he's rich. He got like 700 gold from that. It was a Batrider looking for initiation. I think he can actually go on Bulba. Bulba is pretty far forward. Yeah, he should just go on the Bristleback. He's uh, hesitating now. Bulba's very far in front. Lasso's gonna connect. There's the counter initiation we're talking about from Pilot Eye. Figure on to Hanskin. Crimson Guard does get off. The Mana League goes as well. Aaron now shape shifting. He still has the Aegis. Quick was in the fray. He's got a haste rune. Can they chase anybody down? Blink. They find Seal Kid. And if that's all they get, I'm sure they're fine with it. Raze is going to go. Double Raze actually misses. Seal Kid will try to TP. He won't make it. They did push the Tier 2 tower while that was all happening. And Team Tinker actually took a pretty solid fight. They could have gotten more from that, but I'm sure they're happy they didn't overextend. And they have, they're they happy they took the fight and uh, were able to secure a kill at least out of it. I don't know why Limp was waiting so long. He, he basically waited until his tower died bottom and then went. Uh, he could have either saved the tower by going faster and forcing Koikfa to respond right away, or just not go at all. And he, he like kind of went in between, where he went very, very late. Very nice stun. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Pilot Eye was very, very clutch stun. Yep. Had he not got that off, I think that Bristleback would actually die. Um, there's a Butterfly competed for both Shadow Fiend and the uh, Drow Ranger, so I like the pickups from both of them. Black will flutter in towards the mid lane and... Maybe look to put some pressure on this tier 2 tower and Limp's Lasso now off cooldown has a gem of true sight. So that's another thing that's been a problem for uh, Team Tigger. They've been spending a lot of money on sentries and, and detection, but and that gem coming out is very important. Raze, Quakefa says, thank you for the farm. I'm now back up to 1800 gold after I just bought a butterfly. His GPM is 651 if anyone was curious at home. That's pretty good. And uh, now this is... Is looking not not you know I thought maybe Team Tinker were gonna be I mean all right so listen they have to deal with these minions obviously but they have almost a 10k net worth lead so it's a weird uh, kind of a weird situation to be in I suppose they have a wolf moving on this uh, this coddle who is going for an axe by the way and it's actually quite close to it 
Uh, Bulba is going to TP out. Way too is going to TP out. They suspect something's going on, and uh, they are correct in their suspicions. The smoke coming around, actually. They're wrapping all the way through the jungle now, placing some wards. Smoke's got about two to three seconds left on it. It's about to, to wear off, but there's... Is there any vision on the map here for the Radiant side? No, not really. Bull was up top. Yonasam fan is nearby, but... Uh... He's just gonna go ahead and head down to the low grab. But look at this wraparound on the backside. Black and way to the targets. And they get the Radiant Courier. Now they know something's up. There's anything on it. Uh... No, just a smoke. They're gonna go for the tier one tower. They can see all the birdlings, the Visage birds. It is, uh, of course, as a tier one tower, not backdoor protected. And now they pull the creep wave as well. So this push that was happening in the top lane uh, is, no, is no longer, at least once this creep wave is dead. But Quickfoot will try his best to put some damage onto the tier three tower. Which I, th I think he'll be able to do. Um, yeah, we'll see. They're, they're playing a little bit scared right now. They're, they're scared of this Batrider because they don't have much vision. It is daytime and he gets that extra, like, help from the daytime when he uses that firefly. He's going to TP up towards his racks now and maybe look for initiation that way. They're pinging out some Visage Birds. Um, I thought that the Visage Birds actually got killed last fight, but he just resummoned them right before the the Quill Spray could have done so. So nice job by Handskin by not feeding those away. That's a lot of gold. Yeah. It's 100 bounty, I think, still, right? For each mm -hmm. one. So 300 gold. Not a bad payday for a Bristleback who is... He's in need of some farm. He's at 1300 or 13,000 in net worth. He's fourth place uh, amongst everybody. He is picking up a plate mail, which is the beginnings of a Shiva's guard or an assault cuirass. Shiva seems pretty good, but we'll see if that's his his, his idea. For sorry, for whom? It's the for the uh, bristle back. Bristle? Okay, yeah, yeah, that's good. Shiva's would be great just for the uh, the vision and the slow of all these minions. Um, especially the broods, like, so they can't go in, in or sorry, that they can't, like, maneuver around trees and whatnot. Double damage picked up. Oh, there is no Roshan, though, respawn, so <laughs> that would have died so fast. Yeah, it, it actually... Look at how hard this, early, how Koif is hitting. He's hitting for 500 damage. Dear Lord. That's, uh, that is frightening. Oh my god, he farms so fast. It's ridiculous. Back up to 5,000 gold right now. Scotty, I, I think probably the next uh, the next item you go for. Um, it, it seems obvious. Uh, he might just go for a damage item like Daedalus. Like he's already got damage being added to him, so he could use that extra damage added for a better crit. I don't know. We'll see. I uh, thought Scotty would have been great, but. Limp is getting ready to go. Roshan's falling quick. They're gonna find the lasso on to Black. Can they kill Roshan? They can. They get the age. His finger comes out. Black's dead. He's got buyback, but now they've got a fight without Black, at least for the time being. Crimson Guard pop, highlight eyes low. Requiem goes. Seal Kid's dead. Air pops the BKB. The man fight now beginning. Yonasop fan going to work. He pops his own BKB. And the race is going to work. There's the Aegis. Yonasum fan gonna try to get back up to the high ground. Gets stuck. They have a sentry. They barely don't have detection. Gets forced up. Hanskin's gonna go down. Turns it to a two for two. Actually a three for two if you include the Aegis. The buyback came out from Black. He got into the fray. He did some work, but already getting pretty low again. And uh, Team Ticker still get Roshan though. And they use a couple of BKB charges coming out from NIP who tried a man fight there their way through and aren't able to break the back of Team Tinker. Yeah, I mean, they're still doing well in these fights. And very nice item pickup from the Brood. That BKB totally helped them in that fight. Like, if he didn't have that, I don't think he could man fight that SF at all or just be in, in the fray with the uh, Requiem being able to threaten him. But, uh, it's yeah, it's going to be a Daedalus. I thought, actually, for a second it was going to be an MKB because the uh, the passive that the Broodmother provides is really, really annoying, but um, goes for the Daedalus, which I think is really good because he's already got a huge amount of damage added to him, so why not, you know, benefit from having a crit chance, so. Yeah, they, they are pumping out some damage, quickly specifically. I don't know how you man fight if you're an IP, even with these BKBs. And those BKBs did cause some problems, obviously, but uh, it seems like they they really just didn't care, at least Quickfoot didn't, and... 
Yeah. It's still and a pretty close game, though, I'd say. The good thing is these some of his items are replaceable. Like, he's going to want to get rid of the Blink for, like, an MKB later. You yeah. can probably get rid of the Yules in the later, later stage of the game for, like, um, I don't know, so something else if he really needs to, like a Sheep or a BKB, even a Refresher if he wants it for his BKB. I mean, he's got a lot of options in the late, late stage of the game. It's only 37 minutes. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh... It feels a lot later than it actually is, but I think that's just because of the fact that there's not been much fighting. Um, Bristle actually fix ups an Assault Kuros. It was not the Shiva's Guard, the AC, which is, I think, very, very good. We talked about it for NIP with the armor reduction for the minions and all those units they have, but for Team Tinker, that makes it so they're not as squishy and susceptible to dying to these, these frickin' spiderlings, the minions, whatever, and... Uh, well, with that being said, I do want to swing it over to Pimp Monkle. Let's take a look at that last fight real quick. Pimp, what's up? All right, hello everyone. Let's see if this works. Oh, it indeed does work. Amazing. So for everyone in Dota TV, this is the 35-minute mark fight. So I just want to quickly mention this. Black got caught up to the high ground, and this whole lineup of NIP, yes, they are down a lot of gold. But if you fight in the Rose Pit, if you can, you know, use your battle to his fullest potential, the Broodmother as well, those guys, they do excel on those, uh, those ledges, those cliffs, those trees. Whatever you want to uh, team fight actually as NIP, this is probably the pace to be. And well, with that, Blackboard back for this whole fight. Yes, they did lose the Aegis. I mean, yeah, okay. Obviously, it did get eaten. Um, but still, I mean, they got away with the cheese, with the Eroshan. And it's not this bad. But actually, Mod, let's see how the game progresses. Big fight There's coming up. There's a huge smoke of deceit gang coming in. I don't, NIP are unaware. Pilot Eye about to jump in. Earth Spike could go on it too. They get the silence on it too, first and foremost. Seelkin will most certainly die. Blink forward. They can't find Hoskin. He cancels his TP. I'm not sure if that was an intentional move or not. I think he actually should have just TP'd out. And they see him. Earth Spike's about to go. They find him. They'll get the kill. Hanskin, not much you could do there. And Korkva gets the double kill. And uh, they'll push out top in the process. Yeah, and he has no birds. Yeah. That's, that's really, really big. Yeah. Because even when you're dead, those birds can do some really devastating, um, some, some really strong split pushing. But not going to have those to work with. He's dead for 40 seconds. Won't have him up for another 50 after he respawns. They do have Batrider Lasso again with the BKB. Um, and lots of damage. I'm wondering what this... Okay, this brute's going to go for probably an MKB to counteract these butterflies seems very obvious very strong pickup here for brood and it's going to turn it more towards a battle brood which i think is puts out 370 damage by under vengeful or a debuff yeah yeah that that's debuff is, is quite important too but. yeah that's that's pretty amazing quick fights like a truck and he's gonna have a satanic soon to work with as well so you talk about the battle brood which um I thought he was going to be the one to build the Assault Cross, but that is going to be left to the Lycan as he picks up the Chainmail. Unless he really wants a, a Medallion for whatever reason, but I don't think that'll be the case. And as you said, it is that MKB now coming up for uh, wow. the Broodmother. That's the full thing, okay. And he's got he's very close to buyback, I think, too. I'm going to check that he needs about 575 gold for a buyback. I love this new buyback thing. It's so awesome. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Especially when you're playing, well... It's just the best thing ever. You don't have to... You don't have to think about it at all. It's no. just right there. Sometimes it, I, I notice it does... It, it's kind of weird. Because I'll, like, it'll say, like, you're 200 gold away. And then I'll get, like, a couple of last hits. And it's, like, you're 200 gold away. And I'm, like, uh... Maybe you leveled? I don't know. No, it's, like, it's weird. I think it's based on, like, the scaling and how it works. Okay. Um, who knows? Maybe I'm insane. Maybe. Oh. So Satanic was the choice, I believe, for Gattlefiend, who's getting closer and closer. Um, and whereas, let's see, Drow hasn't bought anything recently. We talked about the Assault Curess already for um, Era, which is not really close to be completed. They'll rotate top with a Smoke of Deceit. And there's a lot of big heroes up here, specifically Yonosam fan. And uh, they're going to look instead for Seal Kid. They, they find him. Seal Kid is not... He has been the martyr for this team. Through and throughout. On two more birds dead. Oh, that's so huge. Like he, I, I think he needs to not keep these birds around where teams are going to be at all, and just keep them bottom. Like always, split push oh. bottom with them or something. Oh, quick for almost two shot a BKB Batrider. That would have been something with, else. With the gem too, but 
Yeah, I think Hanskin really needs to separate these birds and just put them on the bottom side of the map and not keep them up top or, or anywhere that they're going to get killed at all. Uh, just split push with them, I think, at this point. When they get one shot easily by, what, three members of the enemy team? <laughs> yes. Then I, I think they need to... They found Yoda some fan. Do they have the gem? Absolutely. It's on Pile I Die. He could try to fight his way out, but that is actually not happening. Oh, man, that is a big kill. He is down for 80 seconds, does have a buyback. Uh, but I think this is when you want to try to take advantage if you are Team Taker. Try to push into the base. They screw your freaking broodlings, screw your minions. We don't give a damn. We are fighting now. Yep, and the Axe is up on to keep the light. He gets past the gem, which is so important, too, because now it's similar to a Night Stalker with a gem with Axe, except it's in the daytime. So he has the same exact effect, except, like I mentioned, permanent ulti, which is really strong for the recalls and the blinding lights. Um, you can heal your entire team for 500 with the Illuminate if, they're, if they walk into it. It's just a really, really good uh, extra ability to give this Keeper the Light. Um... Well, I thought Bulbo was going to get jumped down bottom, but... By the way, a little bit of Dota lore that Kyle Guy taught me. He brought this up randomly at one point, which he could have completely made up, so... Take all complaints to Kyle Guy, is that... Apparently, Coddle's people, or someone's people, I think it's Coddle's people, genocided the Night Stalker type of people, like Balinar's type of people. And, uh, so... You know, you might think Keeper of the Light is a good dude, and or maybe even Night Stalker's people were horribly bad, but... Just keep in mind that this this dude, this Keeper of the Light, riding around on this horse, genocided almost an entire race <laughs> of uh, Dreadlord-type things, so... What an asshole. Seriously, dude. Yeah, he's a creeper. Yeah, also, I mean, this guy's like a... He's a, he's a fondler. He's... Keep him away from your children. That's <laughs> the type of guy he is. Like, hide your know. kids, hide your wife. Exactly. Like, the, I don't know, man. This guy... Weird, dude. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of Keeper of the Light. I bet he's Catholic. Anyway. <laughs> no offense. I, w I, w I went to Catholic school, okay? I can I can make fun yeah, of it, so. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. got a thing for legs, why so you gotta be... Okay, Okay, the fight's gonna break oh. out now. Boba pops the Crimson Guard, only onto him. Last one's gonna go. The limp taking so much. Earth Spike misses. Yoda's a fan going to work. You cannot man fight Quakeva. That swap saves his life only momentarily. Hans kid going down. Requiem getting channeled. Seal kid gets blown up as well. Three dead. They're chasing after Era. Gets body blocked and... Actually, Koikva didn't have Yules, he sold it for Satanic, which he used in that fight and is now back up to 6,000 gold. But uh, at this point, that might just be it. No Shapeshift, no BKB, no Lasso, no Brood. She'll actually buy back. Yona Sam fan back into the game. Flame Break's gonna go push them back for a moment, but really there's nothing. And this tier three tower is gone. Glyph is done. Yona Sam fan could get chased down if he's not careful. They'll jump back in. No last, so he just runs in. BKB's in fireflies. He has to buy back, and now TP back into the fray. And Team Tinker smartly back away after that huge engagement that they absolutely win. They probably lose Bulba. Actually, he has a cheese. I'm not sure if they lose him. And he's pretty speedy with Warpath. They're going to recall him. He might live, and he will. What a recall from Wei Tzu. No damage dealt to him. He was able to get out safe and sound without even using the cheese. And Team Taker, there's not much of a better fight that could have gone their way with the exception of Black surviving. Yeah, and the recall delay on level 3 is only 3 seconds, so it's it's really, really fast. He's going to recall Pilot Die into the Roche Pit. Unfortunately, it is nighttime, so he doesn't get the extra vision, but... Yeah, they're still gonna pop some blinded lights. As you mentioned, Bulba does have the cheese. And Seal Kid gets like just destroyed up there. I didn't even look. Yeah, he probably one shot him. I actually didn't see. Air is gonna have to TP away. Hanskin is now all in. He is committed, and because of that, he gets a nice finger in the face, a finger in the eye, if you will. And Yoda's a fan has, has got to try to snipe, but with Pilot Eye nearby, actually with uh, Waits you with the gem, if he goes into the pit, which he probably should. And they'll actually recall Black in as well. This is a dead Roshan. They probably see Yonasan on fan up there. Cheese will go to Pilot Eye. Aegis will go to... Denied. Pilot Eye. No, okay. Pilot Eye. Sorry, I... I lost it for a second. <laughs> no, it's okay. That that last fight that happened uh, in the this whole area, I actually had no idea what was going on. I was just on autopilot, like, looking at one part of my screen. Like... Oh, there's the lasso, and limp. 
Trying to do something to Quake for. Pilot Knight actually taking a ton of damage from Jonas Event, and he will fall with the Aegis. That's just the Aegis, though. But he's got a cheese, too, when he comes up. They actually don't have their team. Quakefoot can try to pop a Satanic and go to work, and he will. Aerith taking a ton of damage. Quakefoot now going on lip. There's the Earth Spike on the Jonas Event. Oh, it kills Requiem himself. Requiem actually just blows him up. Yeah, I think he died to the backlash of one of those uh, minions, but... And that's a beyond godlike spree, by the way, for Jonas and Fan. That puts him back up to 2.6k gold after buying back. Uh, okay. And now he might be able to finish this butterfly some, sometime soon. They, that was a 3, almost 4k gold swing. And 2k of that going to frickin' Broodmother. Yeah, alright. Well, they give him a little bit of hope, I suppose. I mean, they're still up uh, 30,000 gold. Actually, probably more than that. It's absolutely insane. No Raxes though. That's no all that Raxes. matters. No Raxes, and they no Raxes, and they have a and they have a Bat Rider. So it's crazy to say, but Nip still have a chance. Anything's possible. And uh, well, Bulba has a heart of trash. They're recalling in Pile I Die. They seem to know something's up, but so do NIP. Whip is gonna lasso into Bulba. but Pile I Die already blinked away. Now they're gonna blink it with Seal Kid. He has swap. Bots in. Finger blows up Seal Kid. I don't know what he thought was gonna happen there. Bulba pops the Crimson green. Guard. Insatiable Hunger goes down black, right clicks him, Hanskin. No MKB procs to stun him up while he's trying to TP away. And that should be the end of the fight. Did, yep. he, did Silk is stun like a neutral creep or something? I thought it was Pilot Eye, I'm not sure. Oh, it's a Pilot He didn't stun the Bristleback? Okay. No, no, he definitely, he jumped in, stunned Pilot Eye, and then Waitsu was behind him, and then he got fingered. Well, I wonder I wonder why they last with the Bristleback then if they weren't going to try to kill him. <laughs> So maybe some miscommunication in general as far as like, oh, we want to lasso this guy, but we have no intentions of killing him, but maybe we want to kill the other guy. I don't know. The recalls are playing a huge role in these fights too. Like he's just constantly pumping more heroes into his fight and, uh, and around him. It's just really helpful. That's a free tier three tower. That's a free ranged Rex also. They, don't have oh, what? they are not TPing back. They have no TP for Era who TP'd mid. So I, they could have actually kept going, uh, if they only know, and they are going to keep going. And uh, still no brood for 44. That is actually a big part of their game plan. Mana leak, BKB, Limp will find a lasso on a quick from maybe not. Instead, getting chased down, Rex oh, is going to oh. fall, and uh, Quakefoot kills Limp within seconds. Hanskin now has got to receive the right flick. He's got to receive the punishment, the unfortunate one, to take the damage. And Era does BKB and run out. But now the Rax is going top lane. GG. And GG is actually just called, and they know there's no way back into this game. And Team Tinker, the celebratory Requiem coming out from Koifa. That was a dominating performance through and through. It, it almost felt like every fight for Tinker that went poorly was around Roshan. And the only real hero that was of importance that had died in this game was Black. Koifa died, I think, maybe once. The score screen will tell Three. us for sure. Three times. Well, all right. I missed two of them. But his GPM is 819 and 658. Trophy is 14.8 fantasy points. Huh. I mean, had hell of a game. We saw this. He broke the record for CS under 10 minutes. Um, a lot of that, as we mentioned, did have to do with the Broodmother um, giving up some, uh, some Broodlings. I still think Nip did a very good job giving it a fighting chance. Like, by all means, they should have lost a long time ago. But... With a kind of cool little lineup that they had with minions plus Howl, they were still able to do tons of damage, but they just got massively outfarmed. It didn't really matter. So nice draft still from from Team Tinker, but um, very big carry coming out from Quickfa. Yeah, absolutely. Quickfa doing his job in that safe lane, and the mid lane bat rider not being as successful as maybe NIP would have liked. But with that Team Tinker, I I, I don't want to say anything too soon, but they're. With this new roster, their first couple of games here in Dota Pit have looked absolutely outstanding. We'll see if they can keep uh, the pressure up here and maybe take the Series 2-0 or if NIP can come back in and even the Series up to 1-1. to We'll have to wait and see, guys. Make sure you follow us. This is, of course, a High Ground TV production. Shout out to Pitmunkle, as always. Catch him over at Pitmunkle on Twitter. Uh, you can check Trough at Trough Dota. Our stats man today is Quantum. You can check him out at Quantum underscore stats. You can follow me at Mott Dota. Check out dotapit.com for more information. Game number two coming up. Stick around, guys.